What's good, peeps? Thanks as always for passing by the channel. Much appreciated. Hit that subscribe button if you guys are new. Right, so yesterday I made a video talking about Deontay Wilder. I think it was yesterday. Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury being signed and sealed for the 22nd of um, February. Um, I did say on that video that I didn't care too much about that fight just because that fight's seven or eight months away and I'm more interested in what Tyson Fury is doing next. I even said something like, I think Tyson Fury is using it as a smoke screen because his next opponent's going to be rubbish and people are not going to care too much because they know, you know what, regardless, we get Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder in February. Um, now, there have been a few names floating about as possible opponents for Tyson Fury's uh, fight in September, October. We heard about Manuel Child. There were whispers about Jarrell Miller, which made my blood boil. But the name we're hearing now quite a lot, I think Tyson Fury's even mentioned this name himself, is a guy called Trevor Bryan. Um, the logic is, uh, or we're led to believe the logic is, Bob Arum and Tyson Fury have both said that they need an American opponent. Last time out, it was obviously Tom Schwartz versus Tyson Fury, a German versus an Englishman in America. Maybe they didn't go down too well with the American fight fans. And this time they want an American versus um, an Englishman, right? Um, personally, I think that's absolute bullshit, if I'm honest with you. Um, you telling me, and this is for the American fight fans that watch this channel, that uh, Trevor Bryan is more known to American fight fans than, I don't know, a Dillian White. I doubt it, right? I doubt it. And I think American fight fans would go crazy for Tyson Fury versus Dillian White as opposed to Tyson Fury fighting an American, right? We've got to get a good American if we're going to get an American. If you say an American, then okay, Deontay Wilder makes sense. And obviously these guys are all lined up for other fights, but that kind of American makes sense. Um, Trevor Bryan, not for me. For those of you that are not too familiar with Trevor Bryan, he's unbeaten, 20 fight, 20 wins, 14 of those by knockout. I think he is ranked number two or three by the WBA, might even be number one. But I think it's number two or three by the WBA because he's got one of these WBA international belts. Um, he's fought absolutely no one. He hasn't fought this year. He had one fight in 2018 and that was against BJ Flores. Um, you might remember the name BJ Flores, obviously uh, fought Tony Bellew in 2016, lost by knockout, I think in the third round. So a cruiserweight coming up. Um, it's bullshit, if I'm honest with you. Absolute bullshit. Before that BJ Flores fight, and I don't even want to get into the fact of how he is fighting BJ Flores um, for a WBA international belt. I don't, I, don't, I don't even want to get into that. But before that, this is who Mr. Trevor Bryan fought. This is the kind of the level he's been fighting at. Before that fight, he was in an eight rounder against a guy called uh, Francois Russell, who was two and 24. You heard me right, people. I'm not even fucking about. Not 24 and 2. That's okay. 2 and 24. 2 wins, 24 losses. No, hold on. We haven't finished. Before that, it was in a sixth rounder against a guy called Sandy Antonio. 2 and 20. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. You can't make this shit up. 2 and 20. You know what it is? I remember when I was young before I even knew about checking people's records. And I mean, we got some dud fights in the UK, you know. Even some of my heroes, the likes of Nigel Ben and Chris Eubank, they fought dud after dud. But at the time it was like, oh, this guy's unbeaten, but we didn't have, or we didn't know about box rec back then. Anyway, before that, so, okay. So just to recap, two and 24, two and 20. Before that, he fought a guy who had 44 wins and 33 losses, 33 losses. And then he fought um, BJ Flores. This is the guy that uh, Tyson Fury might fight next. So don't be fooled and alarmed and all excited when you know it comes up as unbeaten American and he hasn't fought anyone. Honestly, he hasn't fought anyone. This is the kind of opponent that I would expect if someone like Dave Allen comes through David Price, Dave Allen to fight next. I don't expect the ring recognized number one lineal champion, we have to start using that because he uses it a lot now, lineal heavyweight champion to be fighting this type of opponent. But again, they're going to use the excuse saying we need an American because we're in America. Bullshit. You, you don't fool me. Tyson Fury, and look, this is not an anti-Tyson Fury video. I mean, I've made a lot of positive Tyson Fury videos. I've made a couple of anti ones, but everyone gets it from me. This isn't one of those channels that pro matrimonial, everyone fucking gets it. Tyson Fury is cheating the system. I'm sorry, people. Tyson Fury is cheating the motherfucking system. 
So let, let's understand this. He had that fight against Deontay Wilder. Great fight. Loved it. Um, they're going to do a rematch in February. So Deontay Wilder, in order to get to that rematch, um, has to fight Dominic Brazil and Luis Ortiz. Dominic Brazil ain't no fucking joke, you know. Deontay Wilder just iced him. No other guy in the top 10 is icing him like that. I mean, you're, you're going a few rounds with Dominic Brazil. He's a big, strong, durable, normally, guy. Anyway, so Deontay Wilder has to go through Dominic Brazil and then Luis Ortiz. So Deontay Wilder has to go through two guys in and around the top 15. I think Dominic Brazil was probably top 15 before that fight to get to Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury has to go through Tom Schwartz and this kid called Trevor Bryan. If that's not cheating the system, I don't know what is. I mean, let's look at it from a football standpoint. I'm a big football fan. You guys know this. Um, imagine it was almost like, you know, where you like Wimbledon, where you kind of know who, who you're going to play in order to get to the final. So imagine it's like Liverpool Man City, right? So in this example, let's say Deontay Wilder is Liverpool and um, Tyson Fury is Man City. So imagine looking at the draw and Deontay Wilder's like, fuck, I've got to go through Tottenham and we've got Arsenal. Fuck. And then Tyson Fury's looking at the draw thinking, I've got to go through Cardiff and Fulham. And then they get to... <laughs> it's just cheated. He's cheating the system. And um, we as fans are allowing it to happen. Why is he not being forced to fight Dillian White? I mean, them two have started their back and forth now. Dillian White will take that fight. And by the way, I'm not saying Dillian White will beat Tyson Fury because I'm not, but it's a fight I want to see. Dillian White wants to fight Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury said, I'll fight you, but only for the WBC Diamond Belt. The WBC then says, you know what? Why not? WBC Diamond Belt. Tyson Fury said no. And all of a sudden, we're accepting it better not be Trevor Bryan. It better not be. It better not be. And for those casual fans, don't tell me he's unbeaten. Do your fucking research. It's not about being unbeaten. Tom Schwartz was unbeaten. It's not about being unbeaten. It's who have you fought? He had one fight in 2018 and I just ruled off the two guys he fought in 2017. And by the way, those were eight rounders, six rounders and six rounders. That potentially is who Tyson Fury is fighting next. Peace.